Hey everybody, this is Rhino, and we are back to Hearthstone. <laughs> uh, drank too much water. Um, let's see, today is Wednesday, December 20th, and we are got a couple people on the chat, and a uh, I need to get the pirates done. Play ten, play ten pirates. Theoretically, I should trade out the pirates for a sixty and hold on to it for more gold. But uh, this is the European account, so I don't care that much. Also, more importantly, want to get the three tavern packs here. So. I either stay with this deck or I edit this deck and I think what we'll do is we'll just edit this deck to a rogue deck. Type in the word pirate into this glitchy box that needs to be fixed and we'll see how many pirates I can actually play. Not a lot on the European account. Uh, a kind of pathetic 9 out of 30 cards so if I get them all I could get this done in two turns I was thinking about making a base deck just around drawing cards uh, just to lower the number of cards that you actually have that you need to play it's this this there you go that's a rough and dirty deck let's see so Tyler said well bye and then tragic master says pirate time this chair be high says I yard the Simpsons and then there's a message here with just a bunch of gibberish in from Tyler, which is being held for review. There you go. Your gibberish has been approved, Tyler. Hope you're proud. Of course, for all I know, Tyler is having a stroke right now, and, and he's now dying on top of his keyboard moving on with video game news uh, kingdoms new lands one of the kingdom games on steam was free and it may still be free I probably as an advertisement for new lands uh, no it says kingdom new lands is free a super no they have a free super tough DLC expansion called skull skull island hmm. So the original game called Kingdom it was free and the DLC is free but you have to buy. Yeah, Kingdom Classic was free for 24 hours on Steam so maybe you made it, maybe you didn't. I'm not 100% sure about the Kingdom games but it was free so I took it. Looks like it's a... Oh yeah, I, this game was like new just a couple of like a year ago and it didn't get much coverage and not that many people were interested in it so I guess that's why they're they're doing their best to uh, they're, they're doing their best to try and bulk up sales I've noticed that in, on several games lately is they're just like games that really didn't succeed in their first six month launch window are now coming back and trying to uh, they're coming back and trying to make some more sales. Taz says sorry my dog jumped on my keyboard XD lol I was worried about him says tragic master. <laughs> yeah. yeah I can't afford to have my 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 viewers die on me. No. no, we need we need to start a program where all the fans that are watching my channel 
get together and make more babies so they make more fans. So I'm in it for the long haul. I need everybody to impregnate as many people as they can and train them as you raise these children to be fans of my YouTube channel. <laughs> Forget the expense, forget all the other implications. Just make sure they subscribe and watch my YouTube channel. And after you have about four or five offspring who have subscribed to my channel, then you can die. And I'll lose one subscriber for the five I gain. I don't think I wield that kind of power. Let's see, the Escapist 2 is heading to the Switch in January. Do we have an exact date? Uh, man, talk about Team 17 selling the same game over and over again. When people complain about Skyrim on every single platform, but the Escapist and the Escapist 2, which is barely that different from Escapist 1, uh, has been sold and resold and advertised over and over again. Yeah. Hmm. Kill this. Uh, Escapist 2 will be on the eShop January 11th for 19.99 US dollars. Mm. Let's see. Tragic Master says on it. And then Tyler says, well, time to get a wife, smiley face. That's right. <laughs> uh, let's see. Next article. Gametsu Gungrave series has an official Twitter account launched. Gungrave, I believe, was an anime, so they must be making a VR. Oh, it's a VR game. Interesting. Uh, PlayStation VR game for Gungrave. Uh, it's due in the West in early 2018. Uh, let's see. What this game looks like. They really don't have any pictures of it. Hmm. And this is an entire article built around the fact that somebody has made an, a Twitter account for a upcoming game. That's all this article is. Wow. Moving on. Let's see. Uh... A game called Death End Re Semicolon Quest details its puzzles in billiards install genre and bug actions. Like half of those words don't even make sense. <laughs> Let's see. Can we hit that one? And then that one. And then that one. And then end to turn. What game is this? Let's see, there's several Japanese games I've seen are like three different styles of games. So there's like a puzzle style game and then a billiard style game. But what they're calling billiards here does not look like billiards. It's a round table with uh, eight bumper holes. Uh, and then a bug actions game that just looks like a RPG game. So if this game ever comes out of Japan, which it's going to be available on March 1st in Japan, it probably is going to confuse a lot of people, but I imagine it doesn't ever come out. Let's see. Hand of Fate 2 got its first free DLC update today, I believe. Uh, so, if you're playing Hand of Freight 2, you got some free updates. I do want to play Hand of Freight 2 at some point, but probably not too f close to right now. Uh, because... <sighs> Frankly, there's just too many, uh... Uh, playing Hand of Fate 1 was was only a few months ago for me and I, I just don't I, I had enough of that style of game then 
a PC gamer apparently uh, retracted a story or something, which that's odd. Like, it's it was a story about the Vermintide's uh, death of a relic DLC, which Vermintide's is another one of those games that actually looked good, but it was a multiplayer game and didn't get enough coverage. Kind of, so many multiplayer games that required at least four other players to show up. Uh, came out this year and then proved to be close to impossible to to play or just generally uninteresting let's see back to the uh, chat Tyler says we'll try to get a wife uh, yep Uh, next story is Viscera cleanup detail get, has a new level that's covered in graffiti. Uh, I believe it's called Uprising. Uh, again, another great example of a game that's actually very fun to watch on YouTube when you have four or five other YouTubers making jokes and, and playing the game. But in reality, if you're the only one playing it, it's an incredibly boring game. Uh, I definitely wanted to play Viscera Cleanup, but I don't. I'd only spotlight it for thirty minutes. Uh, I'd show off maybe one each map for thirty minutes and then just be done. Uh, and I, I sometimes I'm a little obsessive when I play video games, so playing something like Viscera Cleanup Detail could also become a rabbit hole I shouldn't fall into. Uh, Hmm. Rock Paper Shotgun has a pre-review, which they're calling a premature evaluation of a game called Fade to Silence, which I don't believe Fade to Silence is out, so this is really just Rock Paper Shotgun being paid to advertise this game. Fade to Silence is, well, actually it is out for uh, $26.99 US dollars on Steam. Um kind of it looks like a survival game in the winter fighting some wintery forest monsters uh, but it's mostly I bet just kind of a survival game it might be even a little Dark Souls-esque but mostly I think that it's it's closer to something like Rust and yeah I will keep my ear out to see if more people say Fade to Silence is one to play. Otherwise, I'm kind of assuming that, like so many other games, it's just going to fall to the wayside. Hmm. Yeah. See, I already talked, talked about it, but once again, Maniac Mansion, the original game, is on Steam, which is amazing because that means Disney is putting out its old games on Steam. Uh, also, you could buy Day of the Tentacle Remastered and get both that game and Maniac Mansion. Uh, but if you just want Maniac Mansion, it's $6. Uh, but right now, it's $4.01. Uh, arguably... If you don't have any nostalgia for the old Maniac Mansion game, it, it's one of the most difficult point-and-click adventure games that I can think of, being kind of the first one uh, to use the the adverb system, at least. Uh, so... If you don't know how to to win and you're not willing to look up the solution, you probably won't be able to beat the game. And there's tons of other problems I imagine with it too. Hmm. I'm supposed to be playing pirates. 
At least that's the idea of what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, so paying four dollars for Maniac Mansion kind of doesn't make a lot of sense. Hmm. Let's see. Tyler says rip Dark Souls 4 and then message retracted. So another message deleted. It's it's really weird that YouTube doesn't show the commenter and the modder what people are deleting. But that's like a a weird thing to say. Uh a weird system to to actually be able to take back what you said and and there be no record of it and that's not usually how how the world works uh tyler says and any dlc for dark souls 3. uh remember also demon Souls servers recently shut down so if you were playing that on the playstation uh you, the entire online mechanic of that is out of the picture uh, uh how can I do something here? Just play pirates. Pirates. Let's mill them. My hand is too full. And oh, I could have attacked him with this. Instead, I have to attack him like this because I'm foolish. That was bad. He's got 13 more cards. Uh, there's a game called Rise of the Tomb Kings coming to Total Warhammer 2 in January. So this must be a DLC. Uh, Rise of the Tomb Ra Kings, not to be confused with Rise of the Tomb Raider, which is a... A game I just finished playing uh, is a campaign pack for Total War Warhammer 2. It will be released 20, uh, January 23rd. Uh, and since I don't play Warhammer games, it's just too much to get into. I will leave it at that for people to look up more information if they are interested. Hmm. Let's see. Tyler says uh, I'm. Uh, he's playing Dark Souls 2 again because they're gonna shut down the servers eventually on that. Yeah, I imagine. Yeah, I also wouldn't be very surprised if it turns out that after a year or two of shutting down Dark Souls 1, 2, and 3 servers. So whenever they get around to shutting down Dark Souls 3 server, I wouldn't be surprised if they merged all three of those games into some kind of collection and sold it to you again for $60 with what the multiplayer turned back on. Uh, Dark Souls, particularly, I, I would want to play that with a mod on, like in a you-can't-die mod. Uh, I, I kind of would just hope it took score of how much damage you took and, and just let me always win. Because the frustration points are very real in a game like Dark Souls. Uh, and if that could be... If, if, if you could just cheat and game genie your way through it, I would I would have a much better experience. I did play a little bit, I believe, of either Demon Souls or Dark Souls One, um, and I got relatively far. Let's see if I can remember. Uh, there there is a whole element of the map where hmm, there there was a map under the sewers with where it was really poisonous and y this poisonous area had this half spider half woman so it, whether that's dark souls one or that's demon souls 
I think that's about as far as I got. Uh, maybe I even got a little bit further than that. Uh, but after the amount of effort it took to get to that point, I really wasn't sold on the game enough to continue playing. It's too much time had been spent to get to that point. <clears throat> Let's see, Tyler said, I love the Warhammer mod for Mountain Blade, so good. Hmm. Yeah, one of these days I'm going to have to get into Warhammer and Warhammer 40k, probably at the same time, and try and figure out the differences of the two. But it's such a commitment that, and it, it's frankly not the style of game I usually play. There's a game called Durante, D-U-R-A-N-T, that shows off an instant resume feature that PC Gamer likes. Uh, so. I, I don't even think Durante is actually a game. I think it's a technology uh, that's going to be in a game called Trails of the Cold Steel that will launch you to your last save in about one second. Here, I'm watching a video here. Hmm. Let's see, play this. And then it seems like it did launch in about one second. This video is extremely short. Let me watch it again and pay attention. It's less than 22 seconds for the entire video. So the only way this works though is you're gonna have to have a a 100% save file of all the RAM that's being used by the game. And if you have 16 gigabytes of RAM being used by one game that means there'd be the 16 gigabyte file on your hard drive and even reading that file would would should take slightly more than one second so uh, unless there's some tighter indication uh, and it's apparently you right click the option let's see Let's see. Uh, you're gonna. There's gonna be a major trade off. Uh, for having instant resume. Generally, what I do as a YouTuber who's always recording video games is I just leave the games running. But that, that has a problem of the games often losing stability and crashing. As you alt tab out of them, uh, a lot of games just can't handle being minimized or even just sitting and doing nothing to them for for 12 hours. But most games work good enough. Hmm. Uh, oh yeah, Durante is an op optimizer. Man, third third time. Third time's the charm as far as figuring out who Durante is. Uh, he's a well-known optimizer who who fixes a lot of the bugs in like GTA and uh, and other games. I think he's probably worked on Steam on on Skyrim too. All right, well, that's interesting. So maybe he will convince the industry to adopt his instant resume feature. Yeah, slowly here we're getting, uh, getting to the end. The game Riot Civil Unrest is a handsome but pointless real-time strategy game, according to Rock Paper Shotgun. 
which is odd because I thought they were advertising this game. Uh, you see that sometimes where it seems pretty obvious that that a company is is being paid to advertise the game, and then they come back and say, "Actually, this game sucks." Uh, so I guess that just tells you that maybe they they're not their opinions aren't for sale, just their website completely is for sale. Hmm. Let's do this and that. Uh, if you do want to play Riot Civil Unrest, it's on Steam Early Access for nine pounds. Uh, from what I see on it, it doesn't look that great. Why you would want to play a game where uh, you are the Riot Police? I think during one of the the actual uh, what it was that Egyptian Spring Arab Spring I think so you're you're playing like the wrong side of history I think um, if I'm not reading this wrong and deal one damage draw a card. Go ahead and play that pirate. Deal one damage, draw a card. It's probably could have played this too. Give me a weapon. Just trawling, drawing cards like crazy. Here's an interesting story. I don't know if I can actually repeat this. Like, hmm. Because of the way this was laid out. I believe it was Eidos Montreal, but I could be totally wrong about this. Tweeted out a tweet about one of their employees who goes by the name of Sabrina Signs. At least that is her DJ. Uh, she's in San Francisco, so it couldn't have been either Montreal, could it? One of the video game companies, though, tweeted out this tweet kind of endorsing their employees like moonlighting job as a DJ and this employee is she's she's rather pretty she's got crazy crazy different colored hairs they're, they're putting it to her like what is this mixed cloud website which I assume you can buy songs from so it, it doesn't seem like something like this would have gone through legal at all and it seems like such an odd thing for a let's get some victories with the mage while we're here since we're still trying to get this get get one freaking victory uh, let's do this this uh this That's this one. Hmm. So, on the face of it, you would, I would assume there's probably nothing too illegal with this. Uh, with a company just promoting their own employee. But it also just kind of seems awkward. Seems like something you shouldn't do. If, if I had an employee and he ran his own YouTube channel, I suppose I probably would promote them. Uh, but if they were doing something completely different, I'd kind of think about it. I guess that's something I, I haven't thought. I suppose in theory I shouldn't promote an employee's side ventures. 
whatever they may be uh, just as a matter of cause because if you start promoting one employee side venture then you're gonna have to promote all employee side ventures and there might be some that are objectionable come on give me one I'll take that and brawl just a weird tweet honestly like I know when it comes to the Gearbox CEO, Randy Pitchford, he does a lot of cross-promotion for other things. like, uh, And Bill Gates promoted a book he was really into, but he doesn't do that a lot, it seems. Uh, but yeah, back to Randy Pitchford, he promotes his wife's restaurant. He's got a podcast. He started running out of his restaurant. He's... He's he's gone full nerdist uh, as far as uh, nerdist being a production company that's actually owned by a Chinese corporation, but it seems but they make it seem like it's being run by one guy who's just really really active, uh, and, and you, that one guy shows up on several things. He's he runs a game show on one of the local TV channels. Uh, uh, well, one of the national uh, public uh, broadcasters. And he has a talk show for The Walking Dead and uh, called The Talking Dead. Uh, yeah. Ideally, I would help the person in charge of the Twitter of whatever company that was. And I'm doing a very poor job reporting on this story. I know. I would hope that they would just either not tweet or tweet about their game. Uh, when I'm following a video game company, I just want the press releases. I don't want the politics. I don't want the opinions. Uh, that's not what I'm coming for, for the official public uh, Twitter account of things. It's slightly more acceptable, but not by much. If I'm following an individual game producer and it's their individual Twitter and sometimes they're talking about their game and sometimes they, they're talking about their life or their politics or their opinions on other things, that's slightly more bearable. But when I'm fo following like EA and EA, let's just say it was EA, I doubt it was, but why not? Uh, I just want the facts. That's all I want. Let's go back to the chat. Tyler says, I just got an ad from you and this is the only ad I got from you and I never saw that on your channel from watching 16 of your videos. Damn, the ad to Apocalypse is bad. Uh... And unless you have an ad blocker, that sounds very possibly true. Now, there is some truths that people probably don't recognize. There are sometimes ads that pop up, particularly if you're watching on the browsers, on a web browser, that you wouldn't realize are there. Like, there is a pop-up ad option that shows up here where a square will pop up and you may just click exit and not see it uh, and not even register it in your mind but also if you're just watching the square uh, and not in full screen or anything there are ads on the side of the page and below the page that are also playing but to be more precise yes the adpocalypse is horrible it really is horrible for everybody. Uh, uh, I get videos of Rise of the Tomb Raider immediately marked as not suitable for all audiences. Probably just because it's Laura Croft holding a bow and arrow. Uh, just weapons in the thumbnail seems to mess it up. Uh, to demonetize things. I get things that get marked as demonetized for no reason. And then the Honey Pop series I covered, which I I even said was for a mature audience only, almost all of that 
but not quite all of it got marked as not suitable for monetization and I didn't even request a review on that. One of the things about the the Adpocalypse 2 is videos need at least a thousand views before they look at it in the last seven days. So for a tiny channel like mine, I'm just out of luck when it comes to uh, trying to get any money for uh, most of my videos if they're if they're marked as inappropriate or not suitable for all ad advertisers because those videos will never get a thousand views in in seven days even if I became a like a, a huge youtuber that had 10,000 subscribers there's a very decent chance that my old videos would not get a thousand views uh, particularly since demonetized stuff is often not promoted uh, to people. So it becomes this whole catch-22 of YouTube demonetized my video, my video doesn't get views anymore because my videos don't have enough views, they won't take off the demonetization. And ideally at some point they will get around to fixing this system and making things better but no uh, I'm not sure it's ever going to be that way I think eventually what's going to happen is YouTube making a new YouTube channel is going to become nearly impossible and channels like mine might get kicked off YouTube completely which that's a big problem because I have over 5,000 videos and I don't have enough hard drives to try and download those videos and back them up properly uh, and, and moving that to a new service isn't going to solve too much uh, Amazon is thinking maybe about making a new uh, competitor to YouTube on top of Twitch which they already own uh, they've, they've registered some trademarks that imply that's what they're doing uh, but Amazon's not going to be much better. Uh, what this really comes down to is advertisers pulling out because advertisers don't have money. And in the United States, what this really is coming down to is nobody wants to admit it yet, but we are due for another recession and the economy is just going to tank. Uh, and a lot of people are going to say that that's because of the tax plan that just got passed uh, passed in the Senate and House and and the president's going to sign it. Uh, but in actuality, we were just due for a recession. Uh, the tax plan's not going to help any. It absolutely won't help any, but it, it won't be the reason. Uh, but people don't want to hear that they want to they want to believe that the economy is just going to go up and up and up even though it's at record high numbers and because advertisers know that we're due for a recession even though they're not saying it that they're pulling back on advertising and uh, in particular, the Washington Post is directly trying to destroy anything that competes with the Washington Post, which includes YouTube, because people don't get their news reading Washington Post articles. And so it's old news media sensationalizing and making up stories that don't really matter to try to convince advertisers who, for some stupid reason, still listen to the Washington Post that YouTube is not the place to put their ads, even though it is 100% the place to put their ads. Uh, but I don't want to get too riled up with the adpocalypse. Uh, I didn't start this YouTube channel to immediately make money. Two to three years into running this channel, uh, I'm still not making money. I would like to make money, but frankly, I'm I'm right now just in sub mode. Sub mode. I just want subscribers. Uh, 
if this channel got to the point where it was making a hundred dollars a month which is not a livable wage i would just be happy with that uh, situations will almost certainly change in the future where i would potentially need to either get a different job or uh or demand uh more ad revenue somehow uh, i don't know how you can demand more ad revenue but uh you, well you can't uh, ideally something like patreon if patreon do doesn't do something crazy again would be more preferable than getting ad revenue i'd rather just be directly funded right now if people want to support me the things they can do is they can friend me on steam and give me games that that i spend it at least $300 a year, probably closer to $600 a year nowadays uh, on video games. So if people want to see me cover a new game, gifting it to me makes a lot more sense. It's direct money. It takes away from YouTube taking a 30% cut. Or if people just want to make small donations, uh, they can gift me card packs on Hearthstone uh, too. That, that would work. Uh, if there's any smaller donations, I, I don't know. Uh, if people are buying Humble Bundle things and they're getting duplicate codes, they can direct message me those codes and on Twitter, and that would be helpful too. And, and that's the better way for me to profit off of this channel than, than ad revenue. For the most part, I might... If, if I didn't really just need it to get more subscribers... Uh, I would just turn off the ads. Clearly nobody's seeing them anyways. <laughs> uh. Let's see. Uh, let's see. We've got a new guy called... Vruktik Patel? Are you playing the Tavern Brawl? And Tragic Master says, Yes, this is the Tavern Brawl. Three packs for prize this week. And Tyler says, sup, dude. Fructil uh, says, sup. And then Tragic Master says, Washington Post, the worst place for news. Propaganda paste or most star, in my opinion. Oh, you can't put links in the videos to this chat? Uh, nope, you can't. Only I can do that. Uh, that's just something that YouTube bans completely out for everybody so that that's not me controlling uh, what are you trying to link to and maybe I would post it link myself uh, but no people can't put links it's too easy to put in this virus or you know fake it fake website to steal people's logins hmm. let's see this this Uh, next bit of, uh, news is I'm trying to wrap up the news and probably wrap up the stream. Although it's probably a terrible time to wrap up the stream because people are still talking in the chat. And as long as people are still talking, I typically don't like to go into just silent post gameplay. Hmm. Cast each spell you cast on your minions on this game. Hmm. I don't think I've cast any spells on my hmm. minions. Uh, there's a game called Slay the Spire that's a deck building game. It has some very interesting animation style. Playing a deck building game instead of playing a collectible game like... Uh, Hearthstone has some appeal because you 
theoretically, by the time you're at the end of the game, have all the cards and you're not playing some some microtransaction uh, things. Turn all minions to your hand. They cost one. Well, let's do this first. And then let's go ahead and do this. And then let's do this. And see, there's no reason why you would want to play these cards. Just to, just try to get rid of them or hold on to them in your hand. Uh, so yeah, Slay the Spire is currently in early access for 11 pounds. A lot of these websites are in. Uh, I'll keep an eye out on it. Decent chance, though, that this is not going to be such a finished product that people will want to play it. But you may not even need other people to play it because it may be a single player experience. Let's see. Yeah, it's, it's a completely single player experience. So if you like card games, but you don't like paying for cards, Slay the Spire is one option. It may not be as detailed as the large variety of cards that are available in Hearthstone, and but it might be a, li a livable amount. Hmm. So I'll put that on the wish list. Another game has come to steam from Disney although this time it's doesn't seem like it's it's published by Disney Interactive and it's made by Westwood Studios it's Disney's The Lion King from 1994 uh, mixed reviews let's see what the mixed reviews are I bet it runs like garbage if I was to guess hmm and I bet a lot of people do have uh, nostalgia for this game. Uh, 10 euro shameful hidden emulator with zero optimization for PC. No resolution setting options. Uh, kind of said I can't post a mixed review. Pro it works. The music from the, it's the, the, music from the original game is in this port. Lots of retro ports have stripped it out for licensing. Uh, licensing reasons cons it's a cheap move using DOSBox to emulate the game a lot of old games are using DOSBox and other things uh, and yeah so you probably wouldn't want to play the Lion King on PC but then it gives you that one place to own the Lion King uh, and this would be the DOS version of the Lion King which is probably not the best version of the Lion King because there probably was a Game Boy or a Genesis or some other console version of, of the Lion King that was better. Like, I bet a Sega Genesis version of the Lion King was really good uh, because the Sega Genesis version of Aladdin was pretty well known for being good. So probably not the place to purchase it unless you just want to have everything on your list and happen to be a YouTuber uh, like me. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, let's see. Tragic Master says, Link to never gonna give you up. Sorry, b being FK, playing with my dog at Tragic Master, but sadly not the link to that. Uh, you can actually link to m music, sort of, if you type in uh, asterisk, uh, no, not asterisk, exclamation point, song, space, request, and then never going to give you up the name of the song. That will tell Nightbot to post the link in, in it, as long as it is a song that it can find on YouTube. Uh, but... 
that's the only way. And so anybody can do that. Uh, let's see. I'll... That'll put it on the pl secret playlist that's playing. Hmm. I don't know how Tragic Master got that to work for Epic Sax Guy, but it did. He typed asterisk SR uh, Epic Sax Guy. I didn't know Nightbot did that. Hmm. Interesting. So, Tragic Master knows how Nightbot works better than I do. Which one of these? Any one of these is fine. Hmm. Let's see. Uh, Agony for the PlayStation 4 has some PS4 art box. I wouldn't hold my breath for Agony. I think it's probably an unfinished uh, game that's hiding behind some very spooky, scary, demonic visuals that I would definitely wait until somebody else uh, somebody else reviewed it before purchasing it myself. Hmm. Uh, doing this whole thing with the third seal, final seal, and then the final seal gives you a card I think called the Devourer. It just eats his cards, uh, which might work here to fatigue him, but it's really not worth it. And there's another box art uh, that Gametsu found for Under the Ninth in Under Night in Birth EXE colon late bracket ST bracket, which what a what a title. Uh, it's a, I believe, JRPG game. Yeah, for PS4. Apparently, it's rated 12 under the European rating system, which I assume is Peggy, but it might not be for PC games. Hmm. Hmm. Let's play that. Um, yeah, I guess this guy could do some major damage to me if he was fighting, if he was playing. Hmm. Let's see. Start by doing this. And then... I need to kill this guy just for safety and then we'll do this and see playing all of those cards it takes like 20 mana to get to this point to play a 10 10 10 that destroys your opponent's deck uh, let's see uh, the ESB has rated a game called Atari Flashback Classics Volume 3. Uh, so, more Atari Flashback games coming to some console. Hmm. More knowledge is now known about Catherine Full Body. Apparently, it's going to have uh, new endings and episodes and anime and sexy events and online panels. So apparently they're going to add a lot to the game. I don't know how how playable the game is still going to be, but that's that's a lot to put on to it. So this guy has nine cards. Play this.
so I don't really have to do anything now. I can just fatigue him. Let's see. Hmm. There's a game called World Neverland Daily Life in the Elnea Kingdom. E L N E A. It's coming to the Switch in spring 2018 in Japan. Um, I'm just seeing a trailer here. Hmm. I guess I need to come back and get two more victories for the mage, but let's just open the packets and go over to the Asian account. Uh, we may just try the tavern brawl on the Asian account. Now, all of these cards will probably be new to this account and the Asian account because I didn't open a lot of Frozen Throne packs. Uh, I probably won't get super lucky. This trailer I'm looking at, well, there's an epic. Seems to be mostly just a almost cell phone-like just randomly created 3D models game. Hmm. Nothing too good than this pack. So I doubt this one's going to come to the West. I, or any of those duplicates. Uh, yeah, five of them were. Then we can go to new. And look at the other cards. Let's see. This, the European account is account I fidget with, so if I could uncraft this for dust, I would. But I can't. So just some common cards. Just filling in the common cards. Uh, more than anything else. There's still a ton of cards missing on the European and Asian account. 700 gold. Though we're working our way towards the next expansion, which will just sneak up on us, I'm sure. Uh, and let's launch the Asian account. Yeah, World Neverland does not look like a game worth playing. There's another game called The Men of Yoshiwara Ogiya. So that's Yoshi, Y-O-S-H-I-W-A-R-A, as first word, then a semicolon, then the word O-H-G-I-Y-A is coming to the Switch this winter for Japan. Um, if I was to guess, this is a romantic visual novel on the Switch that will only come to Japan, and it's probably designed for female players because there's five men suitors and uh, the main character you're playing in is a female uh, can't trade any of these out so what do I need I need to play rogue class cards uh, so rogue here hmm. let's quickly build this deck and Hop into a game and then I'll check the chat while it's happening. It's going to be a lot of post game play unless I just kind of play in silence, though. Alright. Brawl. Uh, this visual novel seems to be focused more of kind of feudal Japan story too so it's not a modern Japan story I guess the one thing you could probably take from this is, as a visual novel is if if you were were a lady looking for mature men instead of high school boys which is typically what the stories and visual novels are set in high school uh, at least this way you could Get somebody who's a little bit older. Hmm. Let's see. Let's 
let's look at the chat. Let's see, Tyler said, uh, Song Request Duel of Fates. And the thing picked the totally, uh, totally wrong Duel of Fates song. Or maybe the right Duel of Fates song, I don't know. I thought Duel of Fates was like a banjo thing. And then Tyler said, best Star Wars song. Indeed, the YouTube video of the two martial artists fighting to that song is pretty epic. My song? Yes, martial artist lightsaber fight. And then T Tragic Master says, three packs. And then Tyler's going, song request Jedi Temple March. And the March at the Jedi Temple and Executive of Order 66 has been added to the queue in position number two. And then Tragic Master says, three packs Lich King plus Garage. DK, I think I will never be that lucky again after today. Tyler says, smiley face, smiley face, songs, asterisk, wars, asterisk. So they're playing with Nightbot, mostly. Hmm. Hmm. In what I think is kind of a strange twist, there's this game called the Caligula Effect, uh, Overdose, which has a pre-order bonus for costume DLC, but the costumes that you're pre-ordering are the characters in plain clothes. Uh, which doesn't kind of make sense until you see how they normally are in school outfits. And so what they mean when they say plain clothes is this is your out of school outfit when... Uh, when uh, you're required to wear a school outfit for everything else. Let's see. Let's see if we have a weapon. And we don't want to play that. So I'm just going to end the turn. And so yeah, I'm looking at the trailer and all of the kids are kind of in this black and white grayscale school uniforms. And that did look rather jarring, but I thought that was kind of the point. So now you have DLC that would put them in regular clothes. Or out of school clothes. Hmm. Of course, for non-Japanese people, I, I don't know if that DLC would really sell. Uh, or that would be any kind of incentive to pre-order the game if it was going to come over to the West. Which it probably isn't, just based on the name. Maybe you could change the name to something else, but calling it the Caligula effect, it's not going to work too well. In the West. Let's see. Moving on. Galgun 2 has a TV commercial, so I wanted to watch that. Oh, it's only like 15 seconds. Hmm. Gal Gun 2 will come to the West. Almost certainly. It might have to work with Steam to be approved, though. Uh, one of the things certainly is if a game is on the PlayStation in the West, and Steam is probably a lot less likely to to ban it from their store just to just to ensure that they're competing. Uh, whereas if somebody is just making a PC only game and it's a little risque then I wouldn't be surprised if Steam is more willing to ban it. Well, I'm seeing an ad right now. I get the ads. Maybe maybe YouTube has just determined I'm I'm a better ad viewer. And uh, I try really hard to watch ads for people I want to support, but like if it's somebody like PewDiePie or something, I, I totally will just just like f say forget it. Like it's not worth my time to sit through a four minute ad to to help support somebody who's getting way better support than most YouTubers, 
or if it's somebody that I really don't like, but I end up watching their videos, which happens more often than you would think, uh, I will often intentionally skip ads on them so that they don't get any credit. Like, I'm watching a new video that I haven't seen before for Darksiders 3. It's, it's a new trailer. Hmm. And it has, like, the other two characters from the previous Darksiders in the game. In this trailer. So maybe I'm maybe they're cutting in trailers from the previous games and I didn't don't remember seeing them that very well may be the case. Hmm. All right. And finally I am at the Humble Bundle store which is my marker for being done with the news. Uh, right now the Yogg's Cast Jingle Jam sale is still going on. Let's look and see what new has been added to it because it unlocks new games every day. Um, nothing worth mentioning. Unfortunately, that's been very consistent. It just doesn't seem like it's a great deal unless there's something else. Uh, you just have all of the regular games already. There was this new Indie Hits Humble Bundle. Let's look at that. See, if I played this, it would just bring back all the treasure chests. I don't want to do that. Hmm. Shuffle an enemy minion into your opponent's deck. Hmm. Alright, so the indie hits, what are these? These are all Android games, and yeah, I think I've already looked at this bundle. Yeah, because it's all Android games, I have no interest in them. Hmm. I'm still more interested in the manga games, but I couldn't cover any of them. So, no bundles. Also, no Steam sale. I, I've noticed that there should have been a Steam sale, and there really wasn't uh, by now. I thought there would have been a winter sale. Maybe, maybe it'll happen after Christmas. Uh... Indemic, the creator of the game Plague Inc., which I played for a very long time and actually I'm still playing, uh, has some job listings that I'll cover on Friday. I don't want to get into them right now. Hmm. This. And let's ask this question. Oh, that does work. Interesting. So let me go back to Twitter and see if there's been any anything. Oh, yes, there was one story that, that I I saw. The creators of Dead of Dead or Alive made an announcement to announce that they're not going to be working on Dead or Alive anymore for a while. So don't expect any future Dead or Alive for the next few years. Uh, Apparently, Magic Leap has unveiled its long-awaited augmented reality goggles. They look nice. Uh, that looks very fancy. Hmm. Tyler goes, how do I play the songs? Or can you not play them? 
uh, click the link for your song is the right response. I can't play them. The second I play any music, uh, it gets content ID then claimed. And then all the money I'm, all the pennies or fractions of pennies I might get for the stream goes to that person, this song. Uh, Tyler says, I also watch ad for small channels like that I like. Damn, this game is looks hard to learn. Uh, Hearthstone? Uh, uh, how do I play songs for the, in the stream for everyone to hear? You can't. Like, theoretically, if I unmuted the web page that was playing it, everybody would hear it. But I've tried that, and every single song that gets played gets content ID. Uh, the only th way you could get around it is if you were requesting things that aren't in the content ID system, and like, how would you know that? And there's practically no songs in the content ID system that aren't in the content ID system. Uh, so, and if you were limited to only requesting songs that aren't in the content ID system, you'd be requesting songs nobody really has heard about. Let's see. I'm scrolling down. Hey, the Steam Award nominees have been announced. That's that's a reason to keep playing, isn't it? Let's do let's look at those. That'll be interesting. Uh there was a new study that came out that said the old recommendations for TV time for teenagers were wrong and that there's actually some more benefit than what they thought to to a moderate amount of screen time, TV time, uh, cell phone time. Uh, it is also very true that what kids were doing w when that the previous studies uh, were made is very different than what kids do with screens nowadays. It's much more interactive. It's much more social. Uh, it's not just a not just sitting in front of a passive entertainment form. Hmm. Hmm. Here's an article, a practical guide to uh, game development guide to, for doing ethical playtesting. Hmm. EA Origins holiday sells live, so I bet that will be the trigger for a s Steam sale. Hmm. Let's see. Scrolling down. Jeff Keeley was uh, a temporary host for a game called HQ that a lot of people in the news journalism and media seem to be playing. I'm not sure if it's caught on really with the real world. Uh, let's do this. <laughs> Jeff Keeley is the person who runs the video game awards. Hmm. And as I'm scrolling down my Twitter feed, I think I've seen, uh, I've seen everything. Hmm. Maybe that something worth talking about. I started early today and that means news is still happening. Hey, my channel just aired abduction number six. Let's see. Play that. Go ahead and play that. In the turn. Hmm. Hmm.
I hear the YouTube advertisers post because I watch what YouTube tells the advertisers because it's often slightly different than what they tell the creators and they're saying that how-to videos earn the most attention. I can back that up. The one how-to video I made has gotten way more views than any of the other videos on my channel. Uh, sadly, it really takes some knowledge and skill to make a how-to video and it's not something that you can do on a daily um, or weekly bias uh, basis. And because of the way they've programmed YouTube, how-to creators also can't succeed that well because they would have to make a how-to video every day or uh, every weekday or once a week or once a month. And you just can't have that level of consistency. Hmm. Uh, speaking of Plague Inc., their board game version of their game is about to run out. Uh, Recruit a Beast. Let's go ahead and play this first. Fill my board with elementals. Deal 6 to the enemy here. Start 12. 3 to all enemy heroes. Hmm. So do I want to do... Three or let's do six. And then do that. And then in the turn. Apparently Mad Cats went out of business and now they're trying to make a comeback. Hey, I succeeded. Hmm, I think I'll cover the rest of the news Friday. Activision has some job listings we can cover too. Yeah, unless there's just something super important to talk about right now. I think we've been streaming a long enough where I talk and it's time to go into the silent post show and just try to get some victories, mage victories in the European account and I may need some some other kind of victories here. I need to play rogue class cards for one and let's see I need to win with either the hunter or mage so we'll probably well theoretically I should do the warlock one and try to get more gold and save the 41 and trade it, but we'll see what happens. So let's look as we're wrapping up here. Uh, a lot of people chatting. Let's see, is there more things I can do with Nightbot? Uh, and then Tragic Master typed in quote one and then Tyler typed in quote one and I don't know what they expected to happen uh, because quote doesn't do anything and then tragic master says was checking for twitch nightbot commands uh, well no we're not on twitch so those commands how do I do that says Tyler gg asterisk can you tell me can you tell me? Oh. Uh, and then Tragic Masters says only those two commands, low quotes, has to be set up by the host before they work. Uh, I believe, let's try this, if you type in... Uh, and I'm paying attention to the wrong thing right now. Asterisk commands. Then you can see all the commands. Where is the asterisk on my cell phone's keyboard here? There it is. Asterisk commands. Hmm. 
Hmm. So users can use songs to request song name to request a song. Yeah. And I think that's kind of the only thing you can do, really, besides the Easter egg stuff. So. E-A-S-T-E-R eggs. Hmm. So those are the other ones I've written as Easter eggs, but that's that's kind of it. Like that's kind of all Nightbot can do right now. Nightbot's in beta. Ideally, in the future, they'll uh, they'll uh, be more things it can do. I'll look into the quotes and see if that's something. So you can type in any of one of those commands, and it will give you a different response. So, uh, but. There isn't a ton. Not a ton. I, I spent one evening. Uh, one evening programming the Easter eggs, but that was probably a waste of time, too. All right. Well, there's work to be done. <laughs> Clearly, I need to play more rogue cards. I need to get. Warlock and I need to get mage victories so that will be a lot of silent post show gameplay come back on Friday we'll cover some of that news uh, been a great stream I love when we can get two or three people talking to each other in particular so it takes some of the pressure off of me to hold the conversation and read the news and play a game that's it for the talking portion. Stay tuned if you want to watch the post show. As always, I ask you to like, share, subscribe, comment, and watch every second of my videos. If you want a friend to follow me on basically any social media sites, there's a whole bunch of links down below. Thank you for watching. Have a good evening.